everyone. Welcome to VOD of Consciousness with Cientier. I'm Cientier, and please support me at patreon.com slash Cientier. And we're going to continue making our way up to Beacon's Perch the long way. Uh, we left from good old Camp Rancor, took a stop in Jeldermore War Camp, and made our way through Snake Dance. Now we're in Dreadnought's Drifts. Um, this is a small zone about that size, and then we're going to get into Lornar's Pass. So hopefully this episode we can make our way through this zone and to the destination of my choice uh, for this episode, I hope, which is Lornar's Pass. This is a semi-circular zone, and if we can avoid fighting those enemies, that would be great. I think I can slip around over this way, uh, but we will see if there's some last, like an aggro on some random minions or whatever. It looks like we made it around, so that's good, but we'll have to fight this group, but that's okay. I like a lot of the aesthetic of these dwarven areas. I think they're really cool. Uh, but then I like a lot about this game, so I'm biased, I suppose. Stone Summit Carvers are the bad guy dwarves. There's good guy dwarves that are called Deltrimer. Um, the Stone Summit are big into weird, like, end times -y stuff. Is that right? I don't remember. It's been a while since I've played through uh, the plot of this game. So, maybe I should do that again sometime. How's my inventory space? Okay, cramped. I really should have offloaded stuff at, uh, yeah, because I can't pick that up. Um, short bow. Let's, I need to drop that before I can salvage stuff. It's just a good idea to salvage these things, because they will compress. Um, okay. Uh... Ooh, good. Mark of Protection is very annoying. Oh, wow. Bunch of Dolyak Masters in here. Dolyak hide. I mean, sure, but... Oh, some gold. I want to go pick that up. I got a, speaking of, I got a gold item the other day. What's this composite bow? Ooh, vampiric. Vampiric is nice. Um, the shelter doesn't matter too much. Vamp vampiric is really useful, though. Composite was the... Oh, it's a recurve. Yeah, okay. It's a recurve bow. Recurve is kind of... Um, oh, and here's Lornar's Pass. So... Easily, easily made it. It's been, what, three minutes into the episode? Sweet. Uh, so I was looking at, at the count, because, you know, I record seven of these at a time, and this should be the fifth one. So hopefully I can make it up to Beacon's Perch within that time period. Uh, but I doubt we're going to get out of the Shiver Peaks today, because Shiver Peaks is actually quite a bit of space. Hey, some Grawl. Chill Plains removes enchantments. I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure why I hit Don't Trip there. Uh, it will be useful in this zone in some spots, but I don't... I'm realizing that it, it's been a while since I've been through some of these areas. So I don't really remember all of the enemy compositions. Once we get to Beacon's Perch, we'll also be dropped down to six party members. So that's going to change things a bit. Um, probably drop... Conceptually... Um, Morgan is, and one of the monks are probably what I drop. Uh, like these guys, Water Trident totally knocks you down. Yeah, last time I was ending by talking about my opinion on the state with marriage. You know, that was a thing. Um, no, let's let's leave that alone. I want to get rid of this Dolyak hide. Yeah. Okay. So I'm trying to think about what what would be good to move to. 
I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting because I kind of expected uh, my original topic talking about um, bigotry related stuff or whatever that I kind of started this week off with to last a bit longer. And um, because of how it's difficult to kind of keep track of my brain exactly what I've talked about and how I've approached things. And oh, yeah, that's a this is this is that random. Uh, this is ex Oh, well, we aggroed a bunch of Grawl, but... Um, this spot right here is... Uh, I believe a shrine to Grenth, who is the god of death and ice and stuff. Uh, and we've just aggroed, like, infinite Grawl, so that's, you know, a thing. Fortunately, Blade Turn Refrain's not going anywhere. So, you know, there's that. Yeah, okay. Blade Turn Refrain's useful because they can't take it off with Chill Blains. Bunch of Signet of Agony usage, though. They're doing a cute build. Uh, Signet of Agony and Chillblains inflict conditions upon themselves. Um, what is this? Salvage? Glittering Dust. I kind of thought it might. I'm burning through my salvage items here. Um, Icy Lodestone. Intricate girl necklaces. That guy's a collector. Collectors don't buy stuff. They trade for things. So that's a little annoying, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and visit this spot, though, because this is pretty cool. Uh, they actually have it in Guild Wars 2 as well. Um, but less ornate, as I recall. It's kind of just, like, tucked away. Uh, this is a serious place, like... Let me get my inventory out of the way. Like, look at this. It's got all sorts of crazy statues and stuff. And then here's the statue of Grenth. And I don't know. Uh, five minutes in favor of the god remains. So we could go to the underworld right now if we wanted to. No, we can't because I don't have enough gold. But um, where's my mouse? There it is. But we could theoretically. Uh, so if I um, bow here, it will bring up. Bow? Is it Neil? There it is. Uh, a voice of Grenth. And then we can get some random buffs for gold. Uh, or, yes, the service of Grenth for a thousand gold uh, will take us to the underworld. Um, but as that is not Beacon's Perch, and I'm going to Beacon's Perch, uh, I will not get anything from him. I also don't want to waste gold on buffs that I don't need. Um... So I'm not going to get them. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff social contract-wise. Uh, that the government kind of is involved in for various reasons. I don't know. Maybe I'll take a moment to talk, talk about my thoughts on taxes. Because why not? It can be whatever I want to talk about. It's vod of consciousness. Uh, so my general thoughts on, on taxes. I've been doing a lot of thinking about um, taxation lately. Because... Uh, there's, I mean, tax season has been around, right? That's kind of been happening. Uh, so that's certainly part of it. Um, but one of the things that I've been thinking about with regards to taxes is, like, what seems fair? And I've really been thinking lately that uh, property taxes, like, taxes on property, so on things you own, are actually kind of unfair and the reason why i say that is because um i live in in uh western washington yeah western washington uh and i i had to think there for a moment because i grew up in northern indiana 
So my conception of what I think of when I think of the West is a very specific thing. Like Colorado in my mind is still West, even though it's technically East of me. Uh, and Eastern Washington has the, um, just geographically, has the appearance that I associate with um, the West, whereas Western Washington does not. So, what does this get me like? Okay, some wood. Sorry, I'm salvaging everything to clear up inventory space. I thought that might be the case. Granite's useful though, so at least that. Um, so one of the the problems that we've had over here is uh, the just the area has been growing ridiculously quickly, population-wise. Uh, and the consequence of that is that property rate prices have just skyrocketed, and as a consequence. This property tax is based upon um, how much it's it's considered to be worth, and that's meant that people's property tax has gone up. Uh, so that just makes stuff more expensive, right? Um, so I've just been thinking about that and how that's not actually like the property that someone owns is not inherently uh, producing value. Like, it will produce value when you sell it. So it makes sense to me, basically, to tax income that you get. But it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me to tax uh, owning stuff. Because it's, it's basically the government charging you rent for owning something. And that, to me, seems grossly unfair. Um... Uh, in the sense that, like, if you own your house, for example, why should you have to keep keep paying the money money to the government to be able to live there? Like, why should you be paying the government rent on your property? It's your property, not the government's, right? Uh, so, that little flash on my character, by the way, was just a, the level up thing, except I'm max level, have been for a long time. And so, all that that does is uh, give me a skill point, which is great. You can see I gained a skill point right there. Um, so gaining a skill point is super useful uh, as it lets me get more skills. Um, how many... This character has 47 though, so it's not the most exciting thing. Um, Half Moon's a type of bow. Worth more than some of these things are. Inventory super full. Looking to see if I want to see if any of these are highly salvageable. That's a weird set of mods. Highly salvageable salvageable stuff makes sense to salvage. Like as it is, these intricate girl things actually neither of these are worth anything. Um uh, I just don't have enough to be worth. Uh, let's drop our granite slab. Granite's actually worth keeping just because it's actually slightly more valuable. Okay. Uh, this is just a very long trek, so it's going to happen. But we're actually getting pretty close, so that's good. Um, but yeah, so like I said, I've been thinking about it, and like property taxes just don't make any sense to me. Uh, sales tax makes... A tax on sales makes sense, um, but I would frame it more as taxing the income of the store rather than directly tax putting a tax on the sale of items. Again, what my thought is is just taxing any form of income that's actually like increasing the amount of money that you have. Uh, and... Because I feel like taxing property ownership is uh, really unfair in so much as it doesn't make you have more money unless you sell it. So. 
I guess I'm going to have to start picking and choosing what I carry from now on. Uh, when worms pop out of the ground, they create knockdown. There's actually historically in this game something really interesting uh, called the Drachnar Run. Uh, Drock, Drock's Run or, or whatever. Um, and that's a specific path of coming down from Beacon's Perch, which we're getting pretty close to, realistically speaking. Uh, down through Lornar's Pass, into Dreadnought's Drift, through there, through Snake Dance to Camp Rancor, all the way down to Drachnar's Forge. Um, the reason why that's popular is this is the first location in the game that you could go to to get max level armor. This is no longer true, uh, but especially when Prophecies first came out, that was hands down the best way to get max level armor, or the fastest way, because it was the first place you could get it, was Drachnar's Forge. Um, the game itself uh, takes you from here up through Northern Shiver Peaks, through Kryda here, over and around through this area, and then right here is a mission that teleports you to this desert area. Sorry, I've it's auto running and ran into a wall. Um, and this desert area, once you complete it, you go, you get popped into Drachner's Forge. And so that's where you first get max level armor. Then there's a couple other things you do here, and then you pop over here. This whole area up here, by the way, was added later. Um, so once Factions came out, which was the second campaign... You could actually uh, take yourself two factions and get max level armor there. So that became an alternative. And you could do that from Lion's Arch, which is not very far from Beacon's Perch. Um, it's like the... Basically, it's the next town over. Um, so it... One worm by itself is no threat, by the way. Um, so it, it started making a lot of sense to, uh, to not do that. And then once Eye of the North came out... Also from Lion's Arch, you could trigger that and um, go up to uh, Boreal Station, where you can get max level armor there as well. So there, there started to become some options, but um, that was kind of things initially. Anyway, we're at time, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here. Until next time, everyone, take care. Bye-bye.